Grouping. Somebody said grouping. We love, we love to group. But not everything groups, right? Like this. Letter C on page 18 does not group. Right? So, if it doesn't group, then we have to start guessing. Remember that from yesterday? But we don't just randomly guess numbers. Jake, you with me? We don't just randomly guess numbers. We have a way of giving ourselves a list of possibilities. They're called the possible rational roots. So in this problem, they would be factors of 18, which is always plus or minus 18, 9, 6, 3, 2, 1. Over, so it's factors of 18, over factors of 1, which luckily is just 1. So you need to pick a number in that list and do a division problem. And what do you need to have happen? To be successful, what has to happen? That has to be a zero. Okay, Erica. Do you pick the number from the top or the bottom? It's 18 over 1. These are all fractions. Now, since it's a 1, it really doesn't matter. But it's 18 over 1, 9 over 1, 6 over 1. Those numbers are all fractions. All right, so who's got a guess? Six? No. Oh, we'll just guess six. I mean, it's as good as anything. Uh, you know what? I'm oh, done with six. Can you see why yeah, I'm done with six? What's yeah. happening? It went, it went way too it's high. getting way too high. So yeah. six isn't going to do it for me. All right, let's guess again. Just explain Three. Three. Let's try three. That's not going to work either. How about negative three? On the line. So we're going to put a dot at negative 3. Remember, we're graphing it just like your quiz. Then we look at this right here. That is x squared plus x minus 6. And what do we do with that? We factor it. And that's going to give us our other two dots. So that'll be x plus 3 minus 2. Is that right? Wait a second. Tell me, what's going on here? There's two negative 3s. There's two <coughs> what does that mean? It's a squared factor. It happens twice. So I'm going to bounce at this point and go through at this point. Pay attention. Negative 3, I already had plotted because I divided it in and it gave me 0. Then when I took the leftover part and I broke it down, I got negative 3 again. That means this factor happened twice because I got negative 3 two times. And if it happened twice, that means it is a squared factor. If you get an answer twice, it means it's a squared factor. So the curve's going to bounce. 
lies or I'm scared I'm so confused and not well, I mean, I'm not going to back up and redo everything we did yesterday, but here's the deal. I guessed negative three, and it worked. So I put it on my number line. It's there. Then I took the leftover part, and I factored it, and it gave me negative three and positive two. But I already had negative three. That means I got it twice. So that means it's a squared factor. And you were here when we talked about what happens when you have squared factors. They bounce off. I got that answer twice, which means there were two factors that gave me that answer. Now, how many x's does this problem have? Three is x cubed? Yeah. So it's going to start down, bounce here, and head up here. There we go. There's a lot to keep track of. You have to keep track of it and be organized. Erica? So can you look at the, the x plus 3 squared and the x minus 2 and figure out how many x is in Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, you, you have what you have. So you don't have to look at the I mean, you, you're going to have three factors because you've got three x's. So, yeah, it doesn't matter where you look at that. That is going to not change. It doesn't matter where you look at it. Okay, let's see. I think there's one more, maybe. There is. <laughs> what? I heard somebody say something. The only factors actually are plus or minus 1 and 7 because it's factors of 7, which is only 1 and 7, over factors of 1. What happens if it wasn't 1? Then you would have whatever the factors of that number were. So if that were 2, you'd have a 2 and a 1 down here, which means that not only would you have 1 over 1 as a guess, but you would have one over two. You could guess a fraction, one half. Now we're not going to do that because all we have is there's a one. All right, so let's guess one. I mean, it makes sense to guess one since that's a good number. Oh boy. So we're going straight to the graph, and where am I going to put a dot? At one. <coughs> Everybody with me? Now what's the next step? Lindsay? So I take the leftover part right here, yeah. and it's, at, like you said, it's x squared minus 8x plus 7, and what do I do with that? I factor it. I don't understand why it's two or x squared. Okay, because the original was x cubed, and you divide it, so it reduces by 1. Now. How does this factor? That's our next step. We factor this. How does that factor? Minus 7 minus 1? Uh-oh. Same thing happened before. This tells me that I'm going to have a dot at 7, right? But what does that tell me? I have a dot of 1, but I already have a dot of 1. So this is a squared factor here. I already put a dot of 1, and see how this would tell me to put another one there? That means that's a squared factor, which means we're going to bounce here, right? It's an x cubed problem. Coming up from the bottom, bouncing off, and heading up. There we go. Harry. Uh, I use 7. I got it. I was 
Like I got x to the second minus 2x plus 1. Mm -hmm. And x minus 1 squared. Absolutely. Uh, a couple of you made this point yesterday. Remember, I mean, we're kind of doing this together, but when you're doing this individually, I might guess 1 and you might guess 7. 7 works. Your work's going to look a little different than mine, but ultimately you're going to get the same dots. Because 1 and 7 are both going to work in this problem, and it doesn't matter which one you guess first. Okay? You just got to keep guessing till you get 1 that gives you a 0. So, the plus or minus 1, comma 7, those are the two factors that will work? Well, those are the possible. The same possible. The possible. Okay. So there are four possible numbers that you should try. One, negative one, seven, negative, negative seven. seven. And you've, again, I know you did it, but how did you find those again? Factors of this number. Okay. Over factors of this number. This number. Okay. All right, thank you. So all this does is narrow down your guessing pool, right? Because otherwise you might be guessing 2 and 3 and 5, and none of those are going to work in this problem. Yeah. These are the only ones that could work. They don't all work, but these are the only ones that could work. Okay? Right, now we've got some synthetic division practice. And I just, I'm going to have a couple of you come up to the board and put, that, put B and C up here. But I really want to look at A because there's something weird about problem A. Can you look at problem A and tell me what is weird about it, Katie? It doesn't have an x cubed. It doesn't have an x cubed. And do you remember from last year what you do if you don't have an x cubed? You must put in a zero. So groupies, you have got to be on your toes. Because you know on test day I'm going to try to trick you. <laughs> when I signed my contract, that's what it said. Trick students. Now, what goes out here in the box? Now watch it. Positive two. Remember that, uh, yeah, what goes out in the box is what you would plot on the number line. The box number is the dot. So if you had x minus 2, your dot would be at 2. So that's what you put out here. Now down, mm -hmm. yes, it matters if you put in a positive or a negative. You have to be positive this time. So this 2 comes straight down, and here we go. Double check my numbers. Oh, it has to go in the x cubed spot. Let me know if you match. Okay, now we got to write our answer, though. So this goes back to what Taylor was asking about a minute ago. Remember, this original problem was 2x to the 4th, right? So what's this? 2x to the 3rd plus 4x squared plus 11x plus 13. Wait a minute, I have an extra number. What's that? That's the remainder. So we say plus 27 over x minus 2. That's what we divided by, was x minus 2. Now, if you were guessing and graphing this, you would not use this number because that's not 0, right? But in terms of just doing the division, that's what we get when we do the division. Savannah? I was just wondering how we're getting five to the zero. Okay, because we're doing a problem that says do this division. It just says you like. Okay? Now, do I have a volunteer, two volunteers, somebody to come up and put B on the board and somebody to put C on the board? Go ahead, Julian. <laughs> Okay, kids, I need another volunteer to put C up here. Who will do that for me? Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay. Uh, Moses, did you have your hand out? 
So did you want to come up? Yeah. You want to come up and help someone? Yeah, I'm Okay. Give them a hand. Everybody else is dividing. The original was X cubed. So it, it, it goes by whatever the original was. It was down one. This one was also X cubed, so it went down to X squared. So when you um, get the remainder, you don't go by what you put in the box. You go by the original. Yeah, by what okay. you divided by. Does anybody have a thought on page 19 about the problem at the top? Oh, Julian says one option is we could factor by grouping. I think there's an easier option. Try synthetic division. And if it's a factor, what will happen? We'll get no remainder. So let's see. What am I going to put out here in the box? One. So how do you answer the question? Yes, it is a factor because when I did the division, I got a remainder of zero. Whatever works. Julian says he factored by grouping. So his answer would be, yes, it is a factor because when I factored by grouping, it came out as one of the factors. Well, look who's here. 
So if we did this work, how would we answer the question? No. It is not a factor because when I did the division, I did not get a remainder of zero. But Julian made a different observation. He said it can't possibly be a factor because the only PRRs in this problem are factors of one. Is negative two even in that list of possibilities? No. So if you notice that, you could say it can't be a factor because two is negative two is not in my list of PRRs. Okay? Here's the key. These are yes no questions. That's part of the answer. But the important part of the answer is why. Explain your answer. Okay? You can always do that with division, but Julian's given us a couple of other things that we could use as reasons too, if we wanted to. All right, we're ready? Okay, we're almost done. How anybody know what time this period is? Let's do 7A. Let's do 7A. Given one zero for the following, find the others. Now remember, zeros are x-intercepts. Zeros are dots on the number line. So they're telling me, I don't have to guess, they're telling me You've got this big problem in one of the dots is going to go here. Your job is to do what? Find, Find the rest of the dots. Okay. Any thoughts on how we would do that? Anybody besides Julian? I love you, Julian, but let's see if somebody else can figure this out. What if we like how we did the others and how like after we put the number in we would like just factor out ones after what do you mean? Like, division? So we're gonna do division. Yeah. We're gonna divide out the one. All this does is save me the trouble of guessing. I do it just like those problems. I just don't have to guess. They're telling me that works. So I'm gonna divide it out. And then what? By the way, we knew that was going to happen, right? Yeah, because they told me. So this will be 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Now you're going to factor that. Now you all passed algebra 1. Eventually. Kind of. Here we go. I'm thinking about foiling. What times what is going to give me 3x squared? 3x and x. Plus 
What times what is going to give me two? Two, two and one. Now, things could be rearranged in there. I don't know if I have the order right. So I'm going to foil it out. 3x squared plus 6x plus x plus 2. Does that give me what I was hoping? Yes. So that tells me that my other two dots will be where? Negative 2. Negative 2. I heard somebody say it. Negative 1 third. Now how did we get negative 1 third? Set that equal to zero, and you get negative one third. All right, well, we'll finish up tomorrow. And like I said, we'll start reviewing for a test.